Avalon, I'm in the pod. I'm in the podcast. Oh, sorry. Okay, should I call you back? Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the back. That's side. Avalon, who is in London town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Hannah Ka. Huh? Hannah Ka. What is that? It's my name. My first name is Hannah and my last name's Ka. Oh, uh, like Ka. A K H. Mm hmm. So it's not a person. It is. Who is it? <laughs> no, it's Hanukkah. Oh. <laughs> Is it? Has Hanukkah begun? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. I just... That's, that's a good one. Okay. I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> How are you guys doing? This here is Frank wearing his Christmas sweater. He's, he's in the mood. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't really tell, but this uh, the special part of the Christmas sweater is he has a big full belly yeah. of fluff that you can just feel. We saw one that was um, a snow globe and had snow in it, and we were we were hoping so much that it had a battery that would make the snow fly, because it was just like uh, um, yeah. styrofoam, and it didn't. You know what I was thinking about? Is that Forever 21? Forever 21, do better. I was thinking about fat shaming. Fat shaming? Yeah. Um, I, this one, what I say thinking about in the past 30 minutes? Because I was looking at Santa and I'm like, oh, his big belly. And I'm like, yeah, we're always talking, you know, oh, Santa, he's, he's big, full of joy. Yeah. And then I was thinking about it and I'm like, in depictions of big bodied people. Yeah. In the, like, real depiction. Like, I'm not talking about on tv shows of like uh he's the fat funny guy right but the only two examples i could come up with was santa and buddha oh yeah both like so santa is seen as like full of joy right buddha is is full of wisdom and and like it's not negative at all nobody nobody says santa needs to lose weight or like the point of him being big is like right he's full of joy yeah and it's funny that we never adopt that in society yeah like we try to we try to say that you know like big is beautiful and we try to hit that agenda but in these depictions it has nothing to do with beauty it's not beauty standard right buddha and santa it had nothing to do with the beauty standard it was just like it was just like i said something it's full of full of joy and you're right. seen as a, a big happy person right who yeah who um obviously has so many more attributes and values yeah that don't have to do with their appearance yeah and it's all it almost goes more to that doesn't it yeah like sort of like that's part of it like with buddha and i think with santa it's it's besides what he wears is a choice right and again that's like you know that but it's sort of it would be kind of weird to have a jacked santa it's it's yeah. like supposed to be like it's, right. ev- it's everything that he gives and it's just this like yeah you're big, right happy man and buddha obviously lost all sense of, of material obviously you know siddhartha gutama yeah, he wasn't a big guy, but when they depict him, it's right. not look because at this it's a man. it's a welcoming yes, um, interesting. But yet in real life, people try to put a negative spin. Yeah, like, because uh, yeah, it's almost like that. So that it, like you like why are you like that? Like why am I welcoming? Yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, but how you guys doing? It is Friday. It's fun Friday. Uh, you know, first or second Friday in December. Mm-hmm. We are we are just flying along by. It's December 9th. Yeah, it is December 9th. It's December 9th. You know, twelve nine two two. You love your numbers. <laughs> I do. Um, we're flying through Advent. My numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, twenty five days of Christmas. Um, we're not at the twelve days yet. We're not at the twelve days yet, but. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! Wait, so wait. What did I jog something in your memory? You did. You, you know, I have a, I have a memory uh, issue. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. You yes, you have been doing a mm-hmm. a days of Advent gifts. Yes. And today I got. <laughs> I didn't know you were hinting. Oh, I, we I, both I, I, we I, both didn't I realize. I never expect anything. Okay. Play Doh. Play Doh. And um, I think there was a message on it that I was like, "That's strange." Does it say something on there? Contains wheat. <laughs> that was it. Contains wheat. And I guess because you don't want a, a celiac child, yeah. put, you know, because kids put everything in their mouth. And, and, mo- and most, like, if, the, if you put this in your mouth, there's no wheat in it. But you more know? than that, right? So, like, first of all, everyone knows Play-Doh, like, their slogan has is a warning in itself, fun to play with, not to eat. But as a as a house that has some celiac patients, I think they're just people. I don't yeah. think you have to call them permanent patients. No. Um, I'm not going to do this right now. Uh you know about cross contamination. Yes, and so it's it's oh, deeper. Oh, that's you're so right. Like, you're right. If if 
my sister was playing with this. Right. And then she's eating a bag of Cheetos. You're right. And, and it's like, do the Cheetos have gluten? I've been glutened. Right. No, it's because you were touching right. something that has weed. Maybe in I it. shouldn't have let you have it. Why? Because now you'll touch stuff. Yeah, I touch all kinds of wheat though. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I also, I also got you a advent present. No, you didn't. I You're did. lying. I did. I'm, I, I'm a school teacher, and I, and I made a, made a little, no. little Christmas joy, kind of like, like this guy. You're here. kidding me. Uh, I love it. I'll show the camera first. Uh, an Irish Santa. I absolutely love it. I, oh, and it's not just cut out. This is put oh, together. Oh yeah, it's three piece. Like it's, a snow, a three, like a snowman from the back. Yeah. So me and so you uh, had the glue stick. And everything. Yeah, me and me and my co-teacher, we we draw with the students. So you they, put the hat. You put the the the, the, the um. Oh yeah, that was, it was just a, a black and or it was just a you know. Yeah, regular. The oh, lines. that's you. It's really good. Thank you. Well, you know, that's all. That's all we do. And, and <laughs> even has little rosy cheeks and a rosy yeah, nose. Eight, eight hours. I, um, I, I've said before, I've done more arts and crafts. That's good. You I've done how, more arts and crafts. Uh, you know how in the past few months than I have in my life. Good that is for your brain. Oh, the crow's out. Yeah, no, <laughs> we, me and, and my co-teacher always make jokes of like. When we are coloring, yeah. Oh, she and she got me a gift of brand new pa- uh, crayons that I don't want any of the kids use. Oh my gosh, really? It's, I've never appreciated like a box of crayons so much. Oh, because we have like the, the yeah. buckets of crayons right, that are all broken, broken and, and and chewed on. <laughs> but when it's just a fine tip, that is. So and so yeah, we nice. make jokes of like when we're coloring. It's like uh-huh. and a kid comes over and like it's like whoa, well, yeah. You know I'm busy, right? <laughs> and also when you are coloring within the lines for so long, like, we always would try to do. A spin. Like we were doing the. Oh, I wish I had a photo of it. I think it's thrown away. We we're doing like the Philly fanatic. Um, won the Phillies win the World Series, and I turned mine into a gritty fanatic, and like I changed it. Oh, up how a funny! Bit. So this was my Irish Santa. I love it. Thank you. And um, it's really good for your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Yo. I'm serious. And uh, and you sound all better. It felt like you were sick earlier. And- so also, um, I have been constantly sick since I've started at school. Um, some people call it the, the first year flu. Oh, uh, yeah, for teachers. And so I don't think a day has gone by where I haven't been sick. But I, I've just sort of... Avalon, I'm in, the pod- I'm in the podcast. Oh, sorry. Okay, should I call you back? That's Avalon, who is in London town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I lost my train of thought. No, we should just forget. Uh, you didn't have to address it. I said coloring. I said working with oh sickness. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I've been steadily sick every single day. Yeah. But I've I've sort of narrowed it down. There's um, debilitating sickness. Okay. Where I have to call out and mm-hmm. I have a temperature and stuff. And there's the interim sickness. Ah. Uh. They're always a constant flow of viruses and colds right. and flus and it's like. My immune system is packing so much of a punch right now right. that I'm going to get sick right after I have the debilitating sickness. But then right yeah. after, the next sickness is usually what I call an interim sickness. Oh, boy. You have a whole thing here. And so that's where, like, I wake up with a sore throat, but I it's not – my body's fighting it off stronger. Yeah. Th- yeah that, well, it it's means – It's like waves. It you means know? you have it, a it, very good um, immune system. It means that I've been getting sick so much. I mean, you have a very good immune system. You I are do. constantly – our bodies, everyone's, not just yours, not just mine, is, but is mine constantly especially. repairing and um, fighting off off sickness, and 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 you have to you have to t- tell your mind, you have to remind remind your mind, remind your mind that this is happening. Because if you had w- woke up this morning and you said, "Here it is, <laughs> here it is, I'm sick," and you just got back into bed and you pulled the covers up and stuff like this, I'm sick. I could tell. Um, that you had no faith in your immune system. You know what's funny that you say that? I well, I would go a step further, and this might just be hoopla, but I truly believe it. I think a lot of times when this is especially this isn't like this year during my mm-hmm. my first year flu, but in general, whenever like you you you, know, you wake up and you feel a little something, it's like you know when you feel like the first breeze of winter. Yeah. It's like when you feel the first like thing of a cold. Yeah. I always say, no, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. Because there's like a piece of me that that feels like sometimes as soon as I accept the fact that I'm sick. Right. I get like then it goes into the, the debilitating sick. Right. right. And it's like sort of like my body's like fighting, fighting, fighting. And it's sort of like the retreat flag of yeah, go into fever and shut down mode. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Because. If you don't tell yourself. It's you're very sick, confusing. And I need someone to explain to me 
um, there's the power of positive thinking, but then there's also magical thinking. And so I never really knew about magical thinking. And I was of what you're saying, you know, stay in there and I'm not going to accept it and, and I'm going to keep going. And then your body follows. But there is something called magical thinking, which is like, if you, if you do believe, it kind of will drift into like a superstition or an OCD. If you do, well, I was going to get sick, but every, I always make sure that whatever, like I breathe in the morning dew or I look to the left of the sun. It's like, that's magical thinking. But then there is a place for positive thinking. Literally, I think I said on this show before how in the children's hospital, they had video games of the kids killing cancer yeah, cells yeah. and it, it actually affected them. And so I really, I'm not clear on the dangers of magical thinking. Well, so here's my take on it. And I've gotten this theory from the um, law of attraction. Okay. I read it a lot on the law of attraction and I believe in it. And then once I got deeper into it with my spirituality, I'm like, the law of attraction is eerily similar to prayer, okay. right? Like where you're asking, you shall receive. And, right. it's like, and it's this idea of this constant, like positive thinking produces positive outcomes. And I think once again, we live in an earthly world that is spiritual. And so things are connected. The way we say God is love and it's like, well, I can love on earth is like right. but there is magic in that there is magic in just the positivity and so both like someone who only is thinking um physically with the law of attraction mm-hmm. thinks well yeah but if you're if you're always you're thinking of, of things going the right way you might do something a little bit different and things and that might happen and then they have the spiritual person who's like oh well you know two things happen exactly the same, but because I'm thinking positively, right. it'll change. But it really, it goes to it goes in such a blend together okay. that both are happening mm-hmm. and they're also the same in a way. Right. It's like your positive thinking also is magical thinking. Right. In a way, or if that makes sense. I don't know. I'm thinking positively about this podcast because today's Friday. Oh, man. This week flew on by. Podstatively. Podstatively. Um, <laughs> yeah, we are we are we are going into the weekend. Um, every- but not without bringing no. Dr. Seuss. With not us. without bringing Dr. Seuss. It is Dr. Seuss Friday. By golly, Dr. Seuss Friday in December hits different, and that's that's on D's. Um, yeah, it's Dr. Seuss Friday. What are we doing, Dr. Seuss Friday? Uh, psh, check out the playlist, and you yeah, this you'll is know. forty. This will be forty-one. Forty-one. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. On Dr. Seuss Friday, we read the Dr. Seuss book. And before you say, hey, I'm Kirk and Crow, out. we're very confused. You've been talking about medical practice. You've been talking about religion. Now you're talking about kids' books. Like, uh, what are we doing here? Yeah. No, this isn't about the fact that it's a kids' book. It's, fact, back, it's about the fact that Theodore Geisel, a.k.a. Dr. Seuss, is a really smart man. I color pages a lot in school. As a teacher of very young people. To give them to other people? To give them to other people. No, I'm saying, I thought I was special. You're just giving these out all over town? No, that's the first gift oh, I've re- ever given. Oh, okay. <laughs> in my life. You have to sign it. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I color. I also read children's books. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, Dr. Seuss is different. Okay, really? Yeah. No, like, we, we, we've said this, you know. You can speak on 41 that. podcasts ago, we, I was not teaching small humans no now i am and i read other books and dr seuss is inherently different and not just like oh he's a better like there's something that that almost is like more valuable really about dr seuss books. wow that's really really interesting and our belief and now i'm sort of like seeing it is what makes it stand the test of time a lot of these books are newer and stuff is within these obviously dr seuss, dr seuss had an amazing mind to come up with these rhymes and these clever characters but i think the one the biggest difference is the meaning that is behind the words you speak different languages to people who speak different languages right and so if you give little humans or anybody our our adult verbiage of of how to not discriminate or how to be inclusive or how to love or, or how to you know deal with your own mental health issues right they don't want to you know like let those who have ears hear right dr seuss 
is able to get these messages across in a way that is digestible and is enjoyable. Yeah. A lot of times when you're being told what to do, it's yeah. not an, it's not enjoyable. Like, yeah. Oh, so this is what. But he does it in a way that makes sense. Yeah, he does it in a way that instead of um, it's it's, it's not like a lecture. It's yeah. more of a hey, let's think about things this way. Yes. And then you're and and, and and he's not even. I don't even feel leading you into the answer. No. But he's saying, let's think of answers. Yeah. And and, and just in the way. <laughs> Um, that we read in the Bible, we read parables, and we always say, "Why is it parables?" Right? right? Like, why don't you just tell us? And it's like, it's you're learning about a story, and right. then from the story, you get the fruit of that story. Yeah, and it it can uh, it can work for a more of a variety of situations, and it also the Bible stands the test of time. And so we go back with our adult brains, and we read Doctor Seuss books, and we get try to get that message, mm-hmm. and then reword it in a way of you know where we're kind of um reverse engineering the dr seuss and find the meaning first right and also we always say that it is a as a spiritual podcast this is like you know sudoku for the brain yeah. um when we do read the bible there's so much symbolism there's so many parallel or parables and you uh, as bible study you sort of do the same thing you yeah. are going to read the bible and you're going to say well yeah those characters are not those characters those, those figures yeah. are, are cool right. and what they did is cool, but it's like, why? Why are right. the stories being told? Why is it stand the test time? Why are people? And so this is a smaller version. Love Dr. Seuss. Love doing this. 41 books up, 41 books down. We've dissected them all. So today, without further ado, it's not really coming up in the shot, but I'll put it right here. We are reading, maybe you should fly a jet. Maybe you should be a vet. Um, Two oh. occupations that... Or, or pay well. <laughs> um, when I, I, I bought it, I, I ordered it online because it's getting harder to find the ones that aren't so popular. Yeah. And I am, the, the description when I bought it, it on um, Barnes & Noble, it said, this book was lost for a while or something like that. Oh, was Obviously, it? he didn't draw it. You can see those pictures. Well, that's what I was going to say, but it doesn't say it's by uh, Feel the Sieg. It was... I have. I did not get a chance to really read the background of why they said that, right? Okay. But maybe it is another case of them finding a manuscript and then... Got it. You know, I'm yes. not sure. So, as you know, um, when Dr. Seuss writes a book but doesn't illustrate it, he usually, or almost always, they, then he goes under the pen name Theo yeah. Sieg, which is his last name backwards. Right. But, yeah, if they find it after... They're, it's kind of you can't put something under someone else's pen name. Exactly. You have to then say it's the person you know and love, illustrated by someone else. Because it's also illustrated by Kelly Kennedy, which I don't know if we've read a book right. illustrated by her. Right, before. right. All right, let's read it. Want to be a ticket taker? Want to be a pizza maker? General, jockey, basketball player, ballet dancer, dragon slayer? Do you want to be an astronaut or keeper of the zoo? You've got to do something. What do you want to do? Tailor, sailor, nailer, jailer. You've got to be someone sooner or later. How about a wrestler, a welder, or a waiter? How about a dentist? How about a florist? How about a forester working in a forest? Do you wish to be an oil refiner, diamond miner, dress designer? How about a paper hanger? How about a bass drum banger? Do you want to do your work outdoors? Do you want to work inside? Would you like to be a plumber, a stargazer, a mountain guide? Would you rather work in a mountain town or in the desert lower down? Hat shop owner, money loaner, how about a slide tromboner? How about a perfume smeller? How about a fortune teller? You could be a turkey farmer. You could be a teacher. You could be a lot of things. How about a preacher? (laughs) You could be a clown or a coffee perker. How about an iron worker? Firefighter, crime fighter, television script writer. Some folks make good picture framers. Some folks make good lion tamers. Some folks make good tightrope walkers. Other folks are better talkers. Maybe you should fly a jet. Maybe you should be a vet. How about a deep seat diver? How about a beehive hiver? Would you like to be an actor? Would you like to run a tractor? Like to drive a taxi cab or run a big computer lab? Tennis pro, optometrist, crossing guard, podiatrist, chemist, lipid... What kid's reading that? Lepid opatirist. What? Let me see. 
Mm. Lepidio Patrist. What, what is it? Butterflies? Yeah, Maybe. butterfly expert. <laughs> Glass blower, mushroom grower. How about a fishbone boner or a roller coaster owner? Would you sooner be a ballooner or a grand piano tuner? Olympic champ, reporter of the news. It's very difficult to choose. You've got to be someone. You can't just be a doodler. You could be a sculptor or perhaps a noodle noodler. You might be a private eye. Would you like to be a spy? When you find out what a voice is, you can tell us what your choice is. Those last pages are always a little different, right? Remember, we found that out. That's a voice. Spencer, I don't know, but do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. A voice is nothing. Wait, what's the, what's the page before it say? Someday you must make a choice. Maybe you should be a voice. And then... When you find out what a voice is, you can tell us what your choice is. I think that... Look, the, does the, do the star spell out the word voice? Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a word. I, I think, think it's, it's telling you there's even things that I haven't named. There's... You find out what you want to do, and then you're going to tell us what you want to do. I think that would be like you could... You, we could dissect the book on that last page. Can I see it for a second? Because I want to see yeah. the um, airline pilot who... Oh, the airline pilot is on the front of the cover. I think it's a girl. Or do you think it's a boy? What do you think this is? The, the pilot? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a girl. Isn't that funny? Because remember yesterday I, I, I kept saying the pilot was a boy? Yeah. For Wednesday. So it's a little message to me to remind me that there's girl pilots. There is girl pilots. I know that, but... Yeah, Spence, I can't believe you think you have to check that out. There's no such thing as a voice. He's, okay, it, okay. it must have something to do with the message he's trying to tell us. It's not just a rhyming book. It's not just a book saying you can be anything, right? Yeah. It has to be deeper because it's chetty. Um, all right, you seem to be like all out, out of the sorts or something. Well, yeah, I mean, it's that last Are you dizzy? <laughs> it's throwing me off. Well, um, first of all, okay, well, while we think about the last page, I want okay. to talk about the rest of the pages. Okay. I like it. You know, you, they say you can be anything, right? But a lot of the time you hear that, especially, you know, in schools, teaching mm -hmm. young children and stuff, you think of Grandy, like an NFL player, a, um, you know, a, a doctor. Just, like, like Yeah, the most popular things the that most are most popular yeah. things. Like, he does go to, vet, like, like, an iron worker. Like, he was like, yeah. blue, or like a taxi right. cab driver. Yeah, a jailer. A jailer. Yeah, like, it made it so broad it, yeah it, 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 like it, and there was also a page where it's like would you like to work outdoors would you like to like do something right it kind of felt like more of not you can be anything in the sense of well you know shoot for the stars right it's, you can be whatever you want to be right which is different than you can be anything you can be anything kind of is like Think yeah, of, think he, of, he, think of yeah. like the, the, what, oh, what's stopping you? What are the, what are your obstacles? Like, oh, you, you, you think you can't be a millionaire? You can be a millionaire. It's got put, you, you can't be in Broadway? You can be in Broadway. Yeah. This is, what do you want to do? Some, it, like it does some say person, want over and over again. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's, you have to be something. And it's like, I always think of Dr. Seuss, like I said, speaking to children. Right. And for me, this is a nice book. And also there's this sort of like speaking to children that a lot of children don't have parents that would like a book like this. Right. Right. Because, but I think it's good for a child. It is. Because a lot of like, parents, you know, their, their goals for their child is way more than a taxi uh, cab driver. Right. Or, I, I can't even think what some of them were. Some of them were just like, like artistic things. A or, jester. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And, and crossing it, guard, it, it did go grandiose, but it was mm -hmm. like, no, like don't don't be what you think you should be. What do you want to do? Well, right, exactly. Like, it, it's sort of like a parent your... wouldn't ask, would they like to be a, yeah. a farmer? But it, it doesn't it doesn't cease to put the pressure, uh, not like pressure, but like put the like. Uh, well, the, funny you should say pressure because I want to know about this one. The where, doodler. Yeah, where uh, he's like, you have to be something, and I'm surprised you've that you've got to be someone. Got to be someone. You can't just be a doodler. You could be a sculptor. Or perhaps a noodle noodler. I actually like that. Really? Because it's not, you have to be something, right? It's talking about someone. It's talking about what do you want to be. Right. Like, what do you enjoy? And you can do make it. something out of that. Yeah. Like, right. If okay. you want to be a tax director, like, and you know why I really like that? 
is because Dr. Seuss is a doodler. Yeah. But all in one line, it's you You got to be someone. You can't just be a doodler. You could be a sculptor. or you know, And so those two things go hand in hand, right? Okay. Like, doodling, Explore yeah, more it, than, yeah. It, it's like doodling is, you like, okay, you just want to doodle, right? Because that's obvious. Why can't you be? Right. It's You can be a sculptor. Right. It's, there, there's there's this like you, you you can't just hang around outside all day get a little sir like work like, or yeah you, you can't just like lay on the beach all day you could be a lifeguard uh, yeah a life exactly it, it, it's saying that it, it's like it's because it's not like you can't just be a doodler you need to go to school and, and get your law degree and, and work with your family right you know like it's kind of that idea of right yeah because as an adult you do have to Take care of yourself. Yeah. Because, you know. Yeah. And so the people who are telling you to do these other jobs, you know, you want the child, you want to, you want to um, entertain the child and you yeah. want to indulge the child and you want to make the child feel protected. But you also want the child to grow into an adult that's able to take care of itself. Yeah. And so that has to happen. And so you're, this I feel is, is, is opening up someone's mind to saying, okay, it has to happen that you have to be an adult and you're going to choose something. What do you want to choose? Yeah. And yeah, you are limited to what you're exposed to. So people will say, what kind of music do you like? You can only answer from the music you've been exposed to. Yeah. So like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And like, you're correct. You can only answer what you've been exposed to because you don't know that there's someone who fills the sweaters with the fluff. Yeah. You know? So I like it because once again, it's a book that's asking people, open up your mind wide there's mm-hmm. more than what is already in there because especially if you're if you're talking you know yeah you- and, and like it, it does it states so many things that in such a, a variety of right things. and like like a prompt and so that's why like i like it because there is these things that, like i don't like sometimes even if the book said that i would make an argument for it of like maybe you don't know what you want to be and that's okay too but right. it never really says that it, it does say like you need to be something right but those something is like you could be a clown and that's why i keep getting drawn back to the you can't like that's the only time he says you can't right and like i said it follows up right right with he's a sculptor and also there is this sense of forget about the sculptor um dr seuss was a doodler yeah and that's what he said like and yet he's you know, he's very successful and stuff and it's yeah like, do something with it yeah it's, it's almost like you know he's talking to himself right before he's like he wrote just like his right. first thing it's like uh i can you know Become a doctor or something. It was like, I can't just be a doodler. And it's like, well, I can, but I, I need to do something. Since with I it. like to doodle, what, 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 what is out there that could, you know, go with that? Yeah. And, and, and it's, it, it, at no point does it say you need to be successful. No, it needs, right. It, because you find what you like. Where's the, the picture of, of, or not the picture. There's one thing where it's, it's like welder and stuff. Yeah. Bass drum because banger. when, um, sometimes people have low self-esteem because they'll say, I can't do anything. And you're like, well, no, sure you can. It's like, no, I can't. Like, I'm not good at science and I I, I can't uh, sew and I can't um, cook. Yeah. And so this is a page I like to. So it's, would you rather work in a mountain town or in the desert lower down? And it's they're just both um, ski lift operators. Oh, okay. And so it's, it's, I think it just pushes your mind of not asking what do you want to be when you grow up? Right. But it's say it, it's, it's once again, it, it, it like it internalizes it for a child. It makes it easier to understand than external. It's what do you like? Well, I, I, I know I'd want to work in a mountain town. It's like, okay, that's a start. Right. Or, or, or like it's sort of, it's now it's helping someone who doesn't know. Right. There's so many things. I was one of those people where it's like, and it makes it simple. It's yeah. like, forget about, forget about money. Right. Forget about, but interesting, like you, you, you need to interesting do- you, you said that you learned your lesson when the first thing you said when you saw the title of the book was what? Those are both high paying jobs. Yeah. <laughs> so you valued it for but, money. Know, I mean, like, no, but that, that's an interesting thing. Like, right. Like it, that, that is the title of the book. And they could have used. Yeah, they could use any of the rhymes. From the front. In, a, in a way. That is typically you know societarily of course what even parentally parentally yeah what you get when it's you can be when you it's you can be anything it's like oh i love animals i want to be a vet it's like oh i love to fly i want to i want to be a pilot and when there's like 
it's you it's so cliche never yeah. in a book of like what do you want to be when you grow up yeah have i heard just heard like oh you can be a mountain guide like you right. love to hike but it's like right well how much does a mountain guide pay it's like the first thing you know someone yeah. would say well, i mean or, i could even a crossing guards i think literally work for 30 minutes at a time yeah and it's like it goes from like you know a hat shop owner it's like but then how much does a slide trombone it's right i think it definitely just all in all says and i think that's why it says voice at the end because it's saying these are not you'll never hear the whole list of choices you could you could make something up and that's your job you know yeah so it's um it's really talking but it's not just talking to the child because it's talking to the person reading the book as well yeah and it's it's literally a shameless book because they're not in any kind of order or hierarchy yeah so let's just read this last page in the last minute Maybe you should be a voice. Someday you must make a choice. Maybe you should be a voice. And so he's like, he's speaking. And there's a dog walking away with the, the voice sign. When you find out what a voice is, you can tell us what your choice is. It's like, go, go, go invent something. Go become, go become Steve Jobs. Because when he was a little yeah. boy, no one said... Um, do you want to run Apple? They would be like, what, what is that? Yeah. And there, there's a certain sense of, 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 it makes it so everything we say is like, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? It like, it, you know, it's, how do I put it? It like, uh, dehumanizes yeah. it. It's like, I am a firefighter. Right. right. But it's like each thing is individual. Yeah. Like you will never be just a firefighter. You are that person and a firefighter. Yeah. Yeah, and what if you have a job that you don't identify with? Um, you yeah. can still do these other things. Yeah, you could be a firefighter, but like, what do you want to do in addition? Well, I want I want to paint. And yeah. So and it's I, like, don't don't ever forget to this, 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 yeah. answer yourself. You know, yeah. inside your inside self. Well, that's sort of like what this last page. It kind of like it's like a dream, right? Like they're mm -hmm. looking at these. It's like written in the stars. Yeah. But I like it because it's sort of like he knows what he wants to do. Like I want to be a voice, and it's like. Once he has that dream, and like we said earlier, it's like whatever it is, if it's as simple as I yeah. would love to be a taxi cab driver, it's you see all the people who looking, have made their choice, yeah, and they're they're looking up at what he wants to do, right? Right? It's not like like at first they're they're all just looking, but they're that's that's all really Doctor Seuss wants is like right. he wants you to find out what you want to be, and then everyone's looking at that, like, well, then go be it, yeah, and inspire the next set, inspire the next set. I like it. I mean, definitely my favorite book of, not Dr. Seuss, my favorite You Can Be What You Want to Be book. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the realist. Mm. You know, first things first, Dr. Seuss is the realist. <laughs> but yeah, ne like, never before have I have I seen this sort of both pressure. Because I've always felt that pressure, but you never felt that like you can be yeah. anything. Like, you can be whatever you want to be. Not talking vets and, and jet fighters we're talking about the last thing that was a was a, a hammock tester you just want to lay around and like, all day dr seuss i'm glad he's still um being published and i'm glad people are still having opportunities but people's knowledge really doesn't go far beyond the cat in the hat and horton yeah because yeah. i had to look this up on barnes and noble without any knowledge of it i you know i looked at our list when i went to pick it up i picked it up the 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 uh, worker was like this was really hard for me to find oh, really? in the store and i'm like i know that's why i ordered it because i knew i wouldn't be able to find it but i'm just saying there's gonna be some value in our collection i know but i want th people to realize how many dr seuss books there's more than just yeah yeah the grinch or whatever yeah, that's like yeah. the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. really all right guys we've we've yapped on long enough um go out be fruitful and be um whatever you want to be peace